Operation Confidence proudly presents America's Invisible Heroes Radio Talk Show. Tune in weekly on Sundays from 2 to 3.30 p.m. Pacific Time with your hosts, Consuela Mackey, co-host, U.S. Air Force veteran, Matt Davidson, announcers, Taylor Marcella and Brooke Gadesi, U.S. Army veteran and entertainment host, Charles Whitehead, U.S. Army Special Forces veteran, and I once was whole segment host, Richard Cook. U.S. Army veteran and lifeline for women's veterans segment host, Martha Elena Varela. National Faith Program director and veterans in recovery segment host, Anthony Akimpora. And U.S. Air Force veteran and incarceration to success segment host, Kevin Lewandowski. For more information or to be a guest on our show, email info at operationconfidence.org. Operation Confidence is a grassroots nonprofit. The organization's mission is to provide stable housing for veterans who have experienced homelessness, as well as providing a wide range of supportive services. To help accomplish our goal, a successful landowner has donated land for the project, a world-renowned architect has offered to design the houses, and construction classes from the local community colleges will take part in building the houses. Your support and donations are needed. To get involved, please visit our website at www.operationconfidence.org or email info at operationconfidence.com. Okay. So, welcome everyone. And thank you for tuning in to Americans Invisible Heroes. This show is dedicated to our veterans and their families. Yes, I'm your host, Consuela Mackey, Executive Director of a grassroots nonprofit organization called Operation Confidence. No, I'm not a veteran, but my heart goes out to our American heroes, especially veterans who are disabled and may have experienced homelessness. For those who are new to the show, American Invisible Heroes was established to provide a platform for our veterans to be able to share their experiences, heartfelt stories, resources, challenges, and accomplishments. Now allow me to introduce you to our co-host, U.S. Army veteran, Matt Davison, board member, and he's a U.S., I'm sorry, he is a U.S. Air Force veteran. And then U.S. Army Reserve veteran is Charles Whitehead. He's a board member and a co-host. Martha, Martha Marcella, she's a announcer and also a board member. We have Martha Varela. She's on the advisory board. She has a weekly segment called Lifeline Women Veterans. We have Anthony Acampora. He has a monthly segment called Veterans in Recovery. And we have U.S. Army veteran, I'm sorry, U.S. Air Force veteran, that's John Oppenheim. He has a monthly segment called Veterans Voices from the Hood, Hub. And then last but not least, U.S. Special Air Force, Special Army veteran, and that's Richard Cook. He has a bi-monthly segment called I Once Was Old. For some reason, I'm tongue-tied today, but please forgive me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and don't forget, don't forget, Taylor. <laughs> Don't forget I'm Taylor. Talking, I, no, I'm not forgetting my Taylor. I'm coming back. Yeah. <laughs> and that's Taylor Marcella. She's a board member and an announcer, and she's one of my sweethearts. So anyway, other than that, please bear with me. There's a lot going on behind the scenes here. So let, let Charles take it away from here and welcome our wonderful, wonderful <laughs> guest today. All right. Well, uh, three guests today. We have... Uh, Paige Polonis. She is the president of uh, um, uh, uh, Paige Polonis. So you got the tongue tied today too, huh? Uh, uh, city heart. <laughs> you know, I, I got so much in my heart, I had to figure out which heart it is. She's a president hey. of City Heart. We have uh, Sean Browser. He's a pastor at Everlasting, and he's a U.S. Army veteran and a pastor at Everlasting and commander of Veterans of Foreign Wars, Post 3559 in Miami, at uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars. And then we also welcome Marine veteran Nico Marco, Marco Longo, who joined Challenge Athlete Foundation and leads Operation 
rebound program for injured veterans and first responders. All right. Okay. All right, Matt, you gonna take it away from here? Sure. Hey, we gotta have everybody say hello first. You know. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, make sure they say up. hello. Lighten up, lighten up, Taggart. You know, yeah, that was a Beverly Hills. Uh, um, that was hello, Black Joe. I know you're talking about today. Talking. Huh? I know you're talking about. The, yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah, yeah. Beverly Hills cop. That was the line. Yep. Beverly Hills cop. Hey, okay. Murray, Say hello, and here we are. Okay, my turn? Yes, your turn. Go ahead, Matt. With the most fabled track in motor racing as the backdrop, the American Legion joined with others to address one of the most critical issues facing veterans today, the high suicide rate that a new campaign will address starting uh, on one of the motorsports biggest stages. With the unveiling of the 2013 Indianapolis 500 champion, Tony Kanan's delivery for this year's greatest spectacle in racing, came the unveiling of an effort spearheaded by American Legion and Chip Ganassi Racing that calls on the public to become involved. Kanan was given the okay from teammate Alex Bellew, the 2021 IndyCar Series champ to use the number one for the race. This is an honor bestowed each race on the previous year's Series champ. On Kanan's number one American Legion Honda is the phrase, be the one. The name for this campaign to address veteran suicide it's a cause that Kanan, who finished 10th in the Legion car race in the 500 in 2021, believes in strongly. <clears throat> it's such a good cause, be the one, Kanan said during the April 20 press event outside the pagoda at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I made the pledge to the veterans to advocate that. If you need help, ask. I've learned that 17 veterans take their lives every day. We're here for that. Hopefully we can get the word out. During the event, Kanan was joined by Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb and the American Legion Chief Marketing Officer, Dean Kessel, who called the number of daily suicides the biggest issue facing this generation of veterans. He said the challenge behind Be The One campaign is that if you can save the life of one veteran today, would you be the one to do it? You're gonna be hearing that from us a lot. We're gonna be doing it and how we're gonna be doing it. At the start of the press conference, a group of veterans symbolically stood behind a number one Honda a mix of American Legion writers and Ganassi employees that was 17 veterans to represent the 17 that take their lives daily. Kessel said, this has got to stop, that this generation of veterans, biggest challenge, and we have to do something about it. And there's no organization more poised than the American Legion to do that. With our political capital on Capitol Hill, with our 1.8 million members across the country, our peer-to-peer -peer network makes us the number one hurdle for veterans seeking mental health. We want to destigmatize that. And that's, that's the challenge for uh, this coming Memorial Day and for every day. And uh, we hope people will hear the challenge and get involved and be the one. Oh, as always, Matt, you have something very important and heartfelt to share. Thank you so much. I know that you have to leave now and tell us why. Oh, because I'm like Anthony, I'm working on a book and I, I take up a lot of time doing that, especially in this design stage of the book. It, uh, and you're probably aware of that, Anthony. Your, your writing may be already done, but the design part takes a while. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, 
Anyway, I want to say congratulations to Anthony and uh, wish him luck with his. Uh, Thank you, Matt. You too. I look forward to reading. <laughs> Likewise. And Thank you're gonna, you very much. You're going to announce the name of the book and how to find it later on, right? Once it's completed? I hope uh, so. I will. I, are you talking about or me? <laughs> well, you, of course. Yeah. Well, mine's, mine's called Finding Hope and Hopelessness, and it'll be out in a couple of weeks. And, and Matt? Matt, when is your book coming out? You know? I'm not sure yet, but it, it, it would sort of correlates with what Anthony does because it's called Lost and Found. And it's about my time during the 60s when I was lost with addiction problems. Oh, wow. And how I became found through faith. All right. Oh, Ali, that's wonderful. That's not beautiful. Wow. That's the focus of the book, but it's also got a lot of poetry, a lot of essays, a lot of veteran stuff. Oh, wow. That's that's amazing. Well, we're so proud of you. Thank you. So can't wait to read it. <laughs> I know it's oh. going to be a bestseller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank uh, you, well, Matt. I know you have to go. Until Ann, we send we send our love. All right, Matt. Will, Take care now. We'll see you next time. All right. Bye, Matt. Bye, Matt. Bye, Bye. All right, Martha. Take it away, girlfriend. You got it, Connie. Have you received a suspicious call from the, an organization claiming to represent or have affiliation with the Department of Veteran Affairs or the VA? Did the caller guarantee a lucrative payout for a disability compensation or pension claim for a small fee? If so, you may be a target of a scam, of a recent scam. Recently, the VA has seen an increase in fraudsters and non-accredited representatives who are targeting the pension benefits of elderly veterans and their dependents and survivors. The VA is committed to defeating fraudsters who target elderly veterans by educating them, their families, and all partners about the types of, of fraudulent tactics being used against them, including pension poaching. Pension poaching is the financial exploitation by an advisor who profits by artificially qualifying a claimant for VA pension benefits. The scheme often involves financial maneuvers, such as advising claimants to hide their assets and trusts or annuity products, sometimes resulting in lost investments and lucrative fees paid to the advisor. Pension poaching is rapidly evolving as a preferred method used by criminals to defraud elderly veteran survivors and their families who are eligible for VA benefits. To avoid being a victim to these tactics, here are some helpful tips to remember when protecting yourself from fraud. Be suspicious if someone offers to shift your assets around to qualify for VA pension. You may be required to repay benefits to the government. Never share your e-benefits password or other VA login credentials with anyone, particularly anyone calling on the phone. Do not deposit VA benefits directly into a third-party bank unless the person is court approved or court appointed or VA accredited fiduciary. Remember, the VA does not charge for processing a claim or request a processing fee. Use VA accredited organizations to help file your claim. The VA does not threaten or take adverse actions such as jail or lawsuits on claimants. If in doubt, call the VA directly at 1-800-827-1000 or to report suspected activity, please contact the VA Office of Inspector General, the OIG, by calling 1-800-488-8244. You may also file a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission by visiting www.consumercomplaints.fcc.gov. Protecting veterans' benefits against fraudulent activity is one of the best things everyone can do to honor them, their service, and their sacrifice. Um, I think the biggest one that I've heard for me in, in, in doing the work that I have with veterans is when veterans try on their own to get their service connection and um, are denied, right? So sometimes one, two times, and so they become desperate. And, and it sounds like you know, um, it would be helpful if someone offers to assist you with getting some of that service connection um, uh, benefits 
And so I've heard, I have heard that, that folks are, are kind of at that stage um, in the process where they just really need help. And so a lot of times these organizations will reach out to veterans and promise some of these things like getting their service connection to 100% and other things. So it is a real um, thing that's happening. I just found this article not too long ago um, from the VA. So we wanted to share that information. Thank you, Connie, for, for using this article. Oh, that's a great article. Thank you so much, Martha. We're mm -hmm. going to turn it over to you, Taylor. Yeah. Tony Anthony Ekampora is a published author and graduate of Vision International University, where he earned a master's degree in ministry. He also holds a master's diploma in biblical studies from the International School of Ministry. Anthony is a chaplain and faith program director at Banyan Treatment Centers, an ordained minister, speaker, and writer with articles published in numerous national magazines. Most recently, Anthony was awarded the 2019 Professional of the Year by Broward National Recovery. In 2018, Anthony was selected as a Global Goodwill Ambassador representing the USA. In 2014, the National Association of Social Workers, Broward County awarded Anthony its Public Citizen of the Year Award. Anthony is the former host of the Faith and Recovery radio show, which aired 46 shows in Orlando, Florida and Atlanta, Georgia. Anthony's guest today is retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Sean Brower. He served in the U.S. Army for 31 years, 22 of those, 22 of those years in the Special Forces. He is a pastor at Everlasting Life Church and recently elected to be the Commander of Veterans of Foreign War post 3559 in Miami at Veterans of Foreign Wars. The Veterans of Foreign Wars of the Veterans of Foreign Wars serves combat veterans. Sean has a master's degree in theolo theological studies from Trinity International University. Welcome to the show, Sean, and take it away, Tony. Thank you. That was great, Taylor. Thank you so much. Really blessed um, to have, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Sean on, and uh, I don't want to take up any of his time, so uh, thank you so much uh, for, for joining us, and I'm going to start with a, a question, and I have a few other ones, but you, you have extensive military background, and it's just really impressive, so if you could tell us a little bit about your military career and, and your experience in the special forces. Well, Anthony, the first, first thing I want to say, can you guys all hear me? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, the first thing I want to say, Anthony is I, your credentials were amazing. I had no idea. Oh my goodness, Anthony. Yeah. So what happened was I, I met Anthony on LinkedIn and uh, you know, just a few weeks ago we started talking and, I had no idea. I mean, the more I'm learning about you, the more impressed I am of, of what you're doing. So, so yeah, so I'm very humbled to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, so how did you, um, I mean, maybe start kind of back in the beginning, how did you end up getting into, you know, the military and whenever you see special forces, I, I, I mean, people are usually interested in that. I don't know how much you could share or whatever, but could you tell us a little bit about, about your experience with that? In the army, yeah, I mean, yeah. Basically, what happened was I was going to college and and uh, wasn't that focused when I was nineteen or twenty years old. And so the army helped me do that, you know. So I enlisted in the army as E one, like the lowest rank in the army, and I was a uh, I was a typist when I first joined, which which actually served me really well because um, I learned to type really fast. I mean, I joined I joined in nineteen eighty three. When, when literally we had manual typewriters. Do you even know? You guys even know what manual typewriters are? Is there anybody else out there that knows? I remember. What they are? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, most people don't even remember electric typewriters, let alone manual typewriters. But that's what we had when I went to school. We had manual typewriters. You had to literally push the keys down, and and that made your hands strong. And I, I got to type fast, which has served me my whole life. You know, I can type like I don't know, like seventy or eighty words a minute. You know. But yeah, but then what happened was, is this, is that, you know, in the army, you sing a lot of the songs like, uh, I want to be an airborne ranger. And I remember in basic training, he had all the, oh my goodness, they had all the symbols of ranger tab on the wall and airborne wings and, 
and uh, and I just fell in love with it, you know. And uh, so I went back to college and uh, and did well. I mean, it helped me focus. The army gave me that focus. So I'm I literally like, even though I'm not a recruiter, I just encourage everybody to join the military because of what it did for me. It just it it gave me that focus. It changed my life, you know. So I'm back to college. Uh, went through ROTC, became an officer, went infantry, uh, and then ultimately, you know, then went to Air Road School, Ranger School. Uh, and then ultimately volunteered to go SF. And then, you know, here I am, I don't know how many years later, you know, so here I am. That's awesome. I, yeah, you know, that's I, good. That's I good. just posted something about the whole thing with paying off, you know, loans and different things. And somebody commented, and we we're kind of going back and forth. And I was just saying that I just posted that like in a comment, I was like, go in the military, you know, go to, there's trade schools. There's a lot of other things that you could do yeah. on the job experience yeah. that then have these yeah. huge loans, but that's a whole other thing. Yeah. So t tell yeah. us a little bit about this. Um, this is really impressive too. commander of veterans of foreign uh, wars. And um, how did that come about? And, and tell us a little bit about that. Cause that's really interesting as well. Yeah, well, yeah, well, let me let me just say one thing about joining the military real quick. I was invited to speak at a uh, at a junior ROTC military ball a couple of weeks ago, and it was down in Miami. And uh, and when I spoke at it, you know, I spoke to the cadets and I mean, that's what I did. I encouraged them all to join. You know, I mean, I think a lot of them are already thinking about joining anyway. But but yeah, I was like, look, you know, you I don't know anyone. And you guys you guys tell me if there's anyone on here that's, you know, because I've met thousands of soldiers at this point because I was in the army for over 31 years, you know. Um, and I, I don't know anyone, maybe, maybe I know like one, you know what I mean? And I know thousands of soldiers, but I don't know anyone that actually would say this, like, I regret joining the military. You know what I mean? And when I made that comment at that ball, there was a retired Colonel that was sitting there and he said, no, he goes, it's the opposite. Literally like he, you know, there's like 300 people in the room, but he spoke up, you know, he's, he goes, it's the opposite. And I go, you know, you're right, sir. It's the opposite. I, it, most people say they regret getting out. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just, you know, so I encourage people to join. But anyway, yeah, but about the VFW. Um, so, yeah, what the VFW is, is it's a, it's a, uh, a comp, you know, it's a veteran organization, but it's specifically for combat vets, specifically for combat vets. And so I just met those guys down at Miami Beach and uh, they were like talking me into running as the commander. You know, I didn't know much about the, you know, the VFW at the time, but I went ahead and joined, became a life member. Um, then they had elections, you know, and I, and I, you know, said so that can be the commander, you know, it, you, you know, what it is, is this, is I just have a heart for veterans. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Um, and, uh, yeah, I may get involved in other organizations as well. I, you know, I'm looking into the American Legion as well, just to, cause I just have a heart for vets, you know, and I think that we can't do enough for the guys that have served. You know? Thank you. This leads me to my next question. Uh, what do you think? Uh, could be done to impact treatment for veterans, in particular, those that are disabled and those that are struggling and suffering with mental health disorders and addiction. Because it seems like wherever you go, you, it seems like they're almost, you know, forgotten. And it's such an issue across the country. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, what I, what I say is this, is I, I say this to my guys at the VFW, uh, because they're all combat vets. And so what I say to them is, um, Everybody's been affected by combat. Um, if you've been in combat, you've been affected by it, you know, as, as it's just the way it is, you know, like you you come back a different person than when you went. And, and so what, what we're doing down there is, uh, is something that I learned in seminary. So, so I graduated, you know, last year with my, with my master's in theological studies. Um, and I took an elective. So uh, I took an elective in counseling. It was actually group counseling. And the reason I took it is just because it fit into my schedule. I mean, that's honestly why I took the class. But what, what, what happened was is this, is that I, I, I learned a lot and I, and I ended up believing in group counseling. I, you know what I mean? Like when I first started, you know, I was like, this, you know, it dawned on me. I was like, it's a group counseling class and we're going to actually do it. And that's what we did in class. We sat in a group and we went through like the whole semester of like, and I became a believer in it. So much so that when I graduated, um, or I, when I wrote my thesis, graduating with my with my master's degree, I wrote my thesis on group counseling. You know, because I, I believe in it, and so that's what we're doing at the VFW in Miami Beach is group counseling, where um, where I kind of facilitate and kind of lead it, and uh, do you know don't don't do so much of the talking, but do more of like the 
just making sure it, it flows, if that makes sense, where you don't get one person that talks for, because, you know, like we, everybody likes to talk, you know. So you want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to input. And when they do, then uh, it could be beneficial. I just believe in it. I've seen it. You know, I've seen it work, you know. So that's one thing I think that could help as far as, you know, trauma is just, is just talking about it, if that, if that makes sense. Oh, well, it makes a lot of sense because that's what we do here. I mean, I'm, I'm actually in my office in the faith and recovery program. And, you know, the therapy, most of our, our clients are dealing with just substance abuse. We do have a veterans program and there is a lot of veterans in here. Some of them are combat veterans. And uh, just to be able to connect and uh, that camaraderie and the connection yeah. and to yeah. realize that you're not alone and you're not, yeah. that, like, sometimes you're so isolated with these things and you feel like you're the only one going through them. And then when you talk to people or try to talk to people that don't understand it, what, whatever it is that you've gone through, it's very frustrating because it seems like, you know, a lot of times people just get shamed and blamed and stigmatized when you're talking about mental health disorders and addiction. So um, that, that led me right to the final question here for you. And as far as your, the ministry and your church, tell us a little bit about uh, the church and, and the things that you're doing now. Yeah. So um, like years ago when I was in the army, um, like literally like 20 years ago, I felt like, you know, I just felt called to ministry, but I didn't feel like it was the time. I felt like God was just always saying to me, it's a few years away. It's a few years away. And and, uh, and I, and I enjoy being in the army. It wasn't like God was twisting my arm to stay in, but I really wanted to get out and, and minister is really what I wanted to do. But, but, you know, but I stayed in, as a matter of fact, I stayed in as long as I could, you know, I stayed in over 31 years and they literally were like, you have to go, like you have to retire. And, and so I did. Um, and then, yeah, then I went to seminary and then I felt like God was calling me to start a church. And so I did. And the church is here in Fort Lauderdale. It's a few months old. And we meet in the VFW post um, in Fort Lauderdale, which is post 1966. So, and I know these guys because, you know, I was, I'm, gonna be, I'm the commander of the post down in Miami Beach. So it's a good fit, even though, so yeah, I'm the commander of the post in Miami Beach, but I actually live in Broward County. How, how many of you guys are in Florida or any of you guys in Florida? Anybody? Florida. I think I'm you're the only one in Florida, Anthony. Yes. The most of them oh, are California, I, I believe. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, yeah. So yeah, basically here in South Florida, you got Miami, which is Miami Dade County, and then up here is Fort Lauderdale, which is for like Broward County. So uh so I actually live in Broward County, like 30 minutes north of Miami Beach. And uh and so that's why we meet you the VFW post here because it's close to my house. That's great. Thank you so much. I don't know if anybody else has anything for uh for that Pastor Sean, but if you I do. do. All right, I thought you would. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to ask Pastor Sean to please give us a prayer before you leave. I mean, you, uh, the reason, our purpose for Operation Confidence and our American Invisible Heroes is to sh show how our veterans, some of them are, are really, really needing prayer and needing some resources and needing comfort. And, and this is what we're all about. And to have someone such as yourself and our co-hosts and our guests on and, uh, we can't ask for nothing else but God to continue helping us. And please give us a prayer so that we oh, can no. reach more people and continue our work. And Tony, yeah. you know, you're just a blessing yourself. He's, he always puts a prayer over what we're doing as well. Uh, so what's, what's your name again? I'm Consuela. I'm sorry my name's not up here. I call myself putting it up here. But <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah, I'm Consuela. 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 Are we... Are you are we friends on Facebook? Is that you that I, I friended? Yeah, recently? that's me. <laughs> okay, great. okay, great. Okay, great. Well, well, I'll tell you what. Um, I actually go live on Facebook at our church at like eleven thirty is when I start preaching. Our, our service starts at eleven. And I I usually start preaching at like eleven thirty. So you're always welcome to come on and see my live. What I say is this: as far as my preaching is, um, I have this ability to put people to sleep. You know, so if you want to take a little nap while I'm preaching, then you know you just log in. <laughs> No, we wouldn't do that. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. All right. Well, guys, well, let's pray then. I'm, I'm honored, you know, to do that. And, I, and I, I'll tell you what, guys, what I, I think that um, just anything that people do for veterans touches my heart. Um, and you, Consuela, not being a veteran and doing this is just the most impressive thing. Thank you, you so know, much. To, oh, no, it's no, it's true. OK, all right. Well, let's pray real quick, guys. Um, so God, I thank you for this meeting. I thank you for this time. 
Thank you for Consuela. Thank you for Anthony. Thank you for Matt. Thank you for everyone else that's on here on this uh, Zoom call. Bless, you know, this organization. Bless their efforts here to, to reach veterans. I pray, God, you open up doors uh, for these guys. Close the ones that you don't want, but open up the ones that you do. Bless them, lead them, guide them, provide for them, and uh, use them and uh, help them to reach veterans. And so, uh, God, we pray your hand upon it, bless it, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank amen. you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Pastor Sean. And, it, and please, sir, come back and, and share more wonderful prayers and, and all the good that you're doing out there. And just real, real quick before you sign off, the purpose, the reasons why I took on this, this wonderful, wonderful opportunity to help our veterans is because I discovered an, yeah. an encampment living out of their wheelchairs on the streets of Los Angeles in a horrible, horrible community. And from that point on, God has said, continue on making a difference for our veterans. So I was, would love an opportunity to share more with you later on about that. But that's the reason and that's the purpose for Operation Confidence and our Invisible Heroes. Thank you wow. so much. No, no, no. Thanks for having me. I'll come on anytime. Anytime, anything you guys need, let me know. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and, and I'll email you. I'll connect you with with everyone too. I'll send out like an email with, and it, you know introduce you guys. And thank you so much for taking the time out and coming on and sharing. And, and we thank really you, appreciate it. Thank you no, so much, honor, Anthony. No, honor and a blessing to be here. God bless you guys. All right, Thanks, Sean. Okay, so. Martha, take it away. Oh, I get the opportunity to introduce. Yeah. The awesome Mr. John Oppenheim, who is an Air Force veteran, retired businessman, COO of City Heart, which is a Long Beach nonprofit, and an advocate for veterans, to say the least. John is the COO of the Veterans Council by City Heart as well. And he is also serving his community in addition, in addition to his tireless advocacy work. John will introduce the president of City Heart, Paige Polonis, who I also had the opportunity of meeting this week, um, who is a product of Long Beach. She has worked as a journalist and a nonfiction creative writer in her city for nearly a decade. Born and raised in her favorite city, Paige graduated from California State, Long, State University Long Beach in 2015 with a bachelor's degree in journalism and a second bachelor's in international studies with an emphasis on politics and, and economics. She founded City Heart, an art-based service provider that supports various at-risk communities in Long Beach through a resource hub located at the Villages at Cabrillo. Paige has worked for Congressman Alan Lowenthal, served as communications director for assembly member Patrick O'Donnell, and currently works as part of the community engagement team at Century Housing at the Villages at Cabrillo. Paige loves Long Beach. Kind of like you too, Charles, huh? Okay. Um, take it away, John. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, before I introduce Paige or turn it over to her, uh, I came on, I think it was about three months ago for the first time, maybe even longer than that. And uh, I work couple of different hats, as you heard, and one of them is advocacy. And it's, I, when I was on before, I talked about the, the conditions that we were experiencing at the Century Villages at Cabrillo. Some of you may or may not remember it. We were really, as an advocate, tussling with the, uh, the management at Century. They weren't listening to us, and we ended up doing a protest. And I think my first day was the day after the protest. And uh, I just wanted to bring up to date that after doing something like that and just being a, a royal pain in the butt to those people, we finally reached out to each other, two of us. One is the vice president of uh, Century. And she and I sat down and decided we wanted to really stop this war. And in the meantime, or since then, we've had uh, three or four meetings with management the residents, many of whom are at least half of the 1,500 are residents and are veterans. Uh, but we're, we're meeting on a regular basis and starting to move things forward. And uh, while I bitch about stuff, I feel like it's time to maybe talk about the fact that if you really reach out to somebody, 
and sit down there and talk very calmly and quietly, and you can reduce an awful lot of noise. And so I just wanted to, to bring that up to date. And the other thing is Sean is not anymore, but uh, I was pointing out to Consuelo at the beginning of this that May is mental health month. I was a volunteer with Mental Health America Los Angeles for 30 years. And uh, I, I gotta say that as an advocate and all the people on here talking about veterans and suicide and everything, that the best thing you can do is advocate for more money for mental health help. It is just criminal, the amount of money that is not being spent on mental health by the VA. And I speak from experience in working with 600 veterans and 250 beds that are unfunded by the VA. Wow. And it's just, uh, and just so many of them have mental health issues as uh, Paige can now pick it up from there. Uh, I just wanna say that we formed the Veterans Council about a year and a half ago, and we were, we were looking for an organization that would take us on because we're not a, a nonprofit, but we act like one. And Paige called me one day and said, hey, how would you like to be part of City Heart? And that was uh, a year ago in January, and we're doing some great work together. I really wanted to bring Paige on here and let her share with you what City Heart does and what we're doing, not just for veterans, but anybody who's ever been homeless. Century Village is a Cabrillo, as, as I said, 1,500 residents, almost all of whom were homeless, including about 600 veterans. So Paige, take it away. Thanks, John. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for having me on. I'm, I'm just, this is such a great space to be in. I don't know, it doesn't happen often where you kind of go, oh, wow, I'm in exactly the right spot where I need to be right now. And that's just how I've been feeling all this whole segment. So thank you so much. Uh, this is you. great. Um, I, so <laughs> John, John and I uh, are best when we co-host things together. We kind of play off of each other really well, and it's a lot of fun. Um, so John, I might, I might tag you back in, but um, I'm Paige Polonis. I'm like, you know, um, I am just going to correct one quick thing. I'm no longer an employee of Century Villages at Cabrillo. Um, I need to update that, that bio, but um, just recently I actually left that position so that I could take on City Heart full time. Um, we are also much like yourselves, a grassroots organization. Uh, we're about six and a half years old as a nonprofit. Um, and we've been all volunteer this whole time and just started getting to a point, mostly because of John, where we were getting so busy. <laughs> so we started to grow so much in the last year and a half, uh, thanks to John's, a lot of John's mentorship and, and just his experience and leadership. And so we grew quite a bit uh, in spite of the pandemic, in spite of a lot of the challenges that the pandemic has uh, put in front of us. And so kind of just went, all right, well, we need someone who can be here full time and don't necessarily know what that looks like. And, um, you know, with John's support and also the support of my husband, who's, who's a big part of the organization, uh, just kind of went, all right, it's going to be me. I'm in. And so I <laughs> uh, left my position at Century Villages in March and I'm uh, at City Heart full time. And uh, some days it's, it's great and feels exactly like I'm in the right spot doing the right thing. And some days it's terrifying, but it's been a lot of fun so far. Um, City Heart is, a, is an organization that does two things. Um, one is it tells true stories about uh, community issues, as, as, as was shared earlier. My, my background is journalism, is in journalism. Um, true storytelling is a passion of mine. Um, I love poetry, so I loved hearing about that book that's going to be coming out with poetry and, and stories. I'm very excited about that. But um, our original vision was to just tell true stories as an organization. We were a group of some journalists, videographers, musicians, poets. Long Beach is great. It's a huge art community. So we had a group of artists uh, in 2015 when we first got started. And the idea was to just be a storytelling kind of group. We would just raise awareness of you know key community issues and, and try to compel people to participate in serving those issues and raise awareness. Um, and pretty quickly, in about the first three or four months, we were interviewing folks who were experiencing homelessness. We were interviewing folks who were um, involved in substance use programs. We were meeting a lot of veterans and, and talking to different people about all the different experiences and felt like just telling their story and just raising awareness was never going to be enough. So we started down the path of providing services as well. And then that just sort of took off. And so fast forward to 2019, we opened a resource hub, which is on site at the villages at Cabrillo. And the resource hub 
um, provide support, supplemental case management and care coordination for case managers. We work directly with case managers from homeless services and housing agencies um, who send their clients to us for basic needs, long-term needs, just maybe sometimes it's just they're sending them over for emergency food. Sometimes they're sending us to a, sending them to us to help with, um, you know, finding mental health care, finding finding long-term, high-level needs. And we kind of one thing that we love about ourselves at City Heart is that we we like to say yes, um, even if we don't necessarily have the answer right in the moment. We're going to say yes now, and we will figure it out tomorrow. It's kind of that journalism principle. We'll ask for permission or ask for forgiveness, not for permission, and we'll just kind of jump in and see how however we can serve. Um, we're not very traditional in the in the nonprofit world, and I love that about us. I think we do things in a creative way, as artists do, and we've been able to make a lot of really, uh, you know, meaningful impact for folks. So um, we did just recently get back onto the storytelling uh, part of our mission, which I'm excited about, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. We just launched our first magazine. Um, it's called the Art from Ashes magazine, um, and I have a couple of pages that I'd like to share, if that's okay. Um, the idea of the Art from Ashes magazine is to do exactly kind of what we're talking about here, which is giving a voice to folks who maybe don't have a platform or have an incredible story to tell and just need someone to shine a light on, on them and their voice and, and lift them up. So that's the Art from Ashes magazine. I'm going to share the Veterans Council pages, um, if that's okay. And it's meant to go side by side. So just those, those double S's there. Um, in the magazine form, it makes sense. Um, so this is the Veterans Council by City Heart section of the magazine. I hope you can see it. Um, this is John, of course. We have an incredible team at the Veterans Council. The, the program was founded by a group of veterans who live in supportive housing at the Villages at Cabrillo, um, one of whom was Larry, who's over here on, on this side, um, who passed away in March. And so we honored him in the magazine, of course. And um, then on the back side of the magazine, if I can scroll down. We have uh, just some information about who we are, what we do at the Veterans Council, and really it's peer support and resource navigation. Uh, this is Byron up here and Reggie down in the corner. And of course, that's all three of them <laughs> holding John up. Um, and then of course, I uh, need to mention Akua. Akua is Community is a nonprofit mental health partner of ours. They provide the clinical direction um, and behavioral health services for everything that we do at the resource hub, which is great because again, we're volunteer run and you know they're adding some some incredible legitimacy and direction behind what we're doing um so just wanted to share that and if there's ever you know anyone especially in the long beach area who really deserves to have that that light shined on them and and their voices to be celebrated and lifted up we'd love to do that that's that's what art from ashes is all about um so it's two things at city heart it's the it's the services through the resource hub but it's also the storytelling and the, the raising awareness of key community issues all right that sounds great can I just Thanks. can I just add something um, quickly? I've had the opportunity to participate in some of the City Heart programming now for a couple of weeks in collaboration with Paralyzed Veterans of America, California chapter. So John also um, does chair yoga or like sitting yoga on Zoom. So as we're kind of connecting the the main theme right of May being Mental Health Month and suicide prevention and kind of how important it is to kind of have these programs available and especially when it comes to health and wellness right so i just have to say because you know some folks don't know that i'm kind of dealing with some nerve and muscle issues in my left leg and john is a lifesaver so i've done yoga i used to be the yoga queen back in my day now not so much but i have to say how thankful i am that john has extended and re-extended that that uh, invitation to participate in the yoga and I didn't make the connection because here's me trying to stretch on my own and it's not working and people saying, well, just stretch. And it's like, you don't understand that it doesn't work that way. But it was the connection I made this past Tuesday of the breathing and the meditation piece within yoga that I already knew, but didn't really, it didn't click. So John, you're going to be seeing me every Tuesday at 11 because I think we're onto something here with my recovery. Um, just not a proponent of medication and, and to each zone, I, I will find alternative ways to kind of heal. But, you know, City Heart is really um, reaching out in any way they can to veterans. And I have to attest, I'm one of those veterans that have participated in some of their programming. So really excited um, that you have that I met you here on the show, but then I've also been able to kind of reach out to you guys and looking forward to um, doing more work with you in the Long Beach community. Also, it was nice to meet 
page in person as well. And so just really yeah. excited that you guys are here and, and giving all of that wonderful information about the great work you do. And I'm happy to have that page as well. And John, you, John's going to have a segment. I think it's, it's going to be once a month or once John's twice. Too. How are you going to do the yoga yoga classes? I do the yoga. You mean on 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 our show? On your show? I don't know. I tell you, we haven't really discussed it further than that. But well, we had said you, for you were coming back, and we wanted to have make sure that yeah. you had our right. yoga classes. That's extremely well, important, especially the way that you had taught it before. You know, where you can sit down and a lot of, a lot of our veterans are in wheelchairs. So the right, fact that yeah. they can participate was absolutely wonderful. Actually, I, I did uh, when I, I did a lot of classes had uh, many of the PDACC people on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, we, the things we do, it's uh, basically chair and standing, but, it's, but you can, you don't have to stand, you do almost all of it from a wheelchair. Right. And, you know, we, we don't discriminate. But I want to add one quick thing. I don't want to take any more time and just be quick about it. But uh, Paige didn't really mention the fact that we are a collaborative effort. We're, we're coordinating with a whole bunch of different agencies. People come to us, and it's interesting. You think you were talking, um, I can't remember who it was, but was talking about uh, having people come to them for one service. But when we get referred by case managers, we'll get three or four different things that each person who comes in needs. A veteran can come in needing benefits, but they might need food because if they're living in permanent housing, they have to cook for themselves. Uh, we're getting computers for those who need to get connected. Uh, you know, it's just a variety of things. And because of the fact that Paige and I know almost everybody in the nonprofit world in Long Beach, uh, we're able to reach out. Long Beach is 500,000 people. A lot, of, a lot of people don't understand that. We're a big city all by ourselves, even though we sit amongst the 10 million people who live in LA County. And we, we have our own health department and it really makes a difference So for us in Long Beach to have the hub and be able to get into the resources that are local. We're keeping our own database on that. And I'll talk about that in a future show. But uh, thanks, Paige. So turn back to you. I have a question for you guys. Yeah. You know, knowing that these vets, you said like a certain percent of them used to be homeless. What is the average age of those veterans over there at City Heart? Well, it there's the... Permanent housing average age is probably between 65 and 70. Mm -hmm. um, in the transitional housing, and it's really because there's like I say 600 there, and there's permanent housing has about 400 people in it, and the transitional has a couple hundred. They're called program. There's a women's advance program, most of whom are sexual trauma victims. Um, and then there are those who come, they have an outreach program, get them off the freeways and the, the riverbed, bring them in, feed them, house them, drug and alcohol recovery if it's necessary, and hopefully get them out into the community in Section 8 housing and a job. And so that average age is probably around 30 to 35, I would say. That's what I was thinking, you know, I said, because usually when you think about veterans, you know, it used to be you always think about the older people. Right. But, but you know, there are a lot of younger veterans now, you know, that, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, they, they, they go in, they spend uh, three years in or whatever, they're veterans. So, you know, they're, you know, and, and so that you see a lot more younger people well, I know, I know, and the ones that we see, at least at City Heart, are homeless. Um, we've we've got, got enough reach out into the into the community. Uh, Lummi's working on getting the homeless off the streets, but you know nobody's going to cure that problem totally. Right. Uh, and uh, we just had an example of one guy six weeks ago was homeless, and he's in a transitional program. We're getting a mental health help. He's going to be getting involved in peer counseling. And this like six weeks ago, he's going into permanent housing. And it's really a cooperative effort, but uh, he's not old. 
I mean, we've got people in their 20s that are coming off the streets, you know, just like you say, anybody that goes into military, you think they do have transitional programs out of the military, but it doesn't take all the time. And when you talk to most of them, they say, well, they really didn't do much. And so right. that's where we are. Did that answer your question? Uh, pretty much. Well, I want to thank you so much for that great information. And Paige, you're always, always welcome on the show. You have a wealth of information for us all. And, and I know John must have shared quite a bit, or hopefully quite a bit, and Martha about what Operation Confidence is doing. And we really need your support and resources that you all have so that we can help our veterans as well. Okay? Absolutely. So thank you so much. I look forward to having you back on the show anytime you want. And I thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Okay, we're moving right along here. Uh, Charles, it's on you to introduce Nico. 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 All right. Next up is Nico Marcalongo. He's a veteran of the Iraq conflict who served 14 years as a Marine officer. After his second Iraq de deployment, he was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress, you know, PTSD, whatever that is. You know what it is. After the conclusion of his military service in February 2008, Nico joined the Challenge Athletes Foundation, where he leads the uh, Challenge Athletes Foundation Operation Rebound Program for injured veterans and first responders. Nico and his family were also featured on the Sesame Street Workshop episode, Coming Home, Military Families Coping with Change. Wow, Nico, tell us about the Challenge Athlete Foundation and uh, Operation uh, Rebound program. And I know about Operation Rebound and this because I get emails from them all the time. They send the emails in threes. You know, the same email, you get three of them. I think that's a marketing <laughs> thing that stands out, and that's a good thing. Well, you know, all good things come in threes, Charles. Um, <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here, Charles and Connie. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, as Charles said, I, my name is Nico, and I have the honor and privilege of running the Operation Rebound program at the Challenge Athletes Foundation. At CAF, what we do is we empower individuals who have a permanent physical disability, lead active lives through sports and recreation. I have the honor and privilege of running the Operation Rebound program for injured veterans and first responders. So things such as, uh, you know, a lot of veterans say if they're in the, in the VA system, maybe they're paralyzed, blind other amputees, they can get a lot of adaptive equipment, running prosthetics, um, hand cycles, and so forth, tandem bikes through the VA, but the VA won't necessarily pay for coaching, as an example, so we can pay for that. We have a lot of veterans, they won't buy them a stand-up bike, so because it's not inherently adapted for an injury, we'll buy that stand-up bike. We have veterans who don't have the VA as a resource for them, though they served honorably. Maybe they're in the reserves, maybe they're in the National Guard. And That's they get injured long after service. Well, we can buy those hand cycles. We can pay for those running prosthetics if they don't have the, um, the benefit of the VA. So we're really a force multiplier for our veterans and first responders, police, fire, and paramedics across the country. Uh, we think of us as a force provider. So a veteran says, hey, I'm interested in a sport. We'll support anything from acrobatic plane flying. I've got a firefighter who was paralyzed in Texas. We bought him an engine for his acrobatic plane to uh, Zumba dancing. I have a veteran in um, Puerto Rico who was injured several times, a severe traumatic brain injury in Iraq. And we paid for his Zumba certification. So now he can teach Zumba and make a living off of something he loves related to sports. Uh, wow. inf information is at operationrebound.org. We give grants year round. So it's one time you apply after that, it's a phone call or an email to me or a text. We develop rapport, we develop a, a good relationship and uh, we talk about what's needed and then we support to the best of our endeavor. So uh, great. Uh, so you said apply one time only? That's what, right, you fill out that grant one time after that, it's a phone call or an email to me and we talk about it, you know, you, you know, let's say Charles, you applied three years ago for an air rifle, we got you an air rifle and then tomorrow you said, you know, I'd like to go to the veterans wheelchair games. Just shoot me an email and I say, okay, what day do you want to apply? What airports do you want to apply from? I book your tickets and I send them to you. All right, because we need to talk. Because uh, I actually be I, I was uh, victimized by the the you know the status. So I'm U.S. Army Reserve, but I'm not service connected, right? So 
and I work for, you know, Rancho Los Amigos, you know. So all the guys on the team apply for new chairs and stuff like that. And uh, because I'm a veteran, they say, oh, no, don't worry, you'll get better stuff. I said, okay, because the VA will provide it. And you know what happened? Everybody got a chair. Charles got nothing. That's yeah. right. If you don't have VA benefits or you're not enrolled in the VA, then the VA is not even going to look at you unless you're considered catastrophically injured. And generally, that's going to be somebody who's a quadriplegic, for example. Maybe in some cases, paraplegia, uh, you wouldn't fall into a category. So if you're having difficulty, uh, you can just go through us and we can provide you what you need, Charles. All right. So we'll be talking. We'll be talking because, yeah, I, you know, I, I was going to get a hand cycle. And then it was like, oh, no, you're a BA. Oh, yeah, you get good stuff. And all the guys are talking. Yeah, man, you're a veteran. What happens? I'm over here the corner. We'll sing for chair now, you know. <laughs> Wow. Well, yeah, and I we, think can talk, too, we can talk we can talk offline, send me an email. And we'll I know, I know, I know. I just you know, I, I, I you know, when things like this cuz I'm actually fighting for my um service connection, you know, just to, you know, anything, but um you know, it's it's a it's a long battle and I have the the third uh, part of it. I've been denied twice, so I'm waiting to see a judge whenever that's going to be. And so, you know, we can you know, we'll talk, but I like to bring this up because it happens to people like myself. You know, am I going to be okay either way? Yes, but then you know, some people aren't as uh, as uh, you know blessed as I am. I would say it's the word because you know I do. I feel blessed. You know, just the whole you know everything I've been through in life. You know, I, you know, I tell people I've been in nine different hospitals throughout my life, nine hospitals, and I'm still here and I'm still cranking and doing what I do. And you know, so. holding down a job at Rancho for over twenty years. Right, board you know, member all, with four organizations, right, right, including here and on various committees and commissions, and you, you in a band there. making music, it has its own band, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. you're an amazing role model, you don't well, let anything stop you, and you, you love know, it for it. And that's why I say life, life is still good, regardless, you know, it's just that you know, these little things happen, you know, and, right. And if you don't talk about it, people will exactly. think, oh, yeah, it's all, it's great, you know, to, you know, and, and you know, it hasn't been all great. Um, not to say that it's uh, devastating to me, but still, you know, it's like these things happen. So when I get somebody like yourself on, you know, I always let them know, hey, you know, it's like, you know, it's not as all peaches and creams, you know, so. Well, I think Nico is one of them angels too, like Tony that just flew oh, yeah. in yeah, absolutely. for us. Absolutely. He he and I have a story that came out the heavens all by ourselves, huh, Nico? We'll be able to share more about that as time goes on. But uh, we want to thank Nico for what all he's doing for our veterans and yeah. how he's helped Operation Confidence and things that we're about to do that's going to be life-changing for some of our veterans and the community as well. So thank you so much, Nico, for being on the show today. Please come you were gonna bring someone on today, right? You know what? Yeah, I'll get somebody. I'll get somebody for a future broadcast. Right. Um, and we want you to have a segment as well because you have a lot of information to share. Okay? Absolutely. And oh. I just want to say thank you, everybody who's here and those who left already for doing what you do. You know, I tell everybody we support uh, veterans the way we fight, right? As coalitions, right. we share information. We yes. provide something. You know. Maybe with uh, there might be a vet out there who needs a home and maybe they're paralyzed as well and they want to get into sports. So you're going to provide them that those services, those homeless services uh, page. And I might provide them, you know, an opportunity to go to the National Veterans Wheelchair Games. So we all work together. and We're going to be able to help that veteran. And that's what it's all about. Working together. That's right. As one team to support that's the right. veterans in need. There you go. Well, I love it. Thank you so much. Yeah, Paige, sure. you know, we totally thank you and of course john and of course tony i can just go on and on and of course richard and you know all my babies and you and of, course, that. of course <laughs> of course of course of course <laughs> thank you so much okay we're going to move right on to our last guest for today and that would be our sweetheart uh richard and now, U.S. Are you going to present veteran. Richard Taylor? Yes. And now, U.S. Army veteran Richard Cook's presentation entitled Veterans Never Quit. But before we share the photos, Richard, tell us about some of the latest sports events you've been a part of. 
Well, some of the latest events I've been doing, the, as you can see on the screen, the VA throwdown. It's not resting throwdown, it's VA throwdown, but it was a series of exercises that need to be done and to qualify, and I end up taking the gold medal. That's uh -huh. one. I'm, I'm doing a few other things as well, too. Like yesterday, I worked on a music video as a disabled veteran, and that music video was pretty good at that point. So, yeah, that's some of the, some of the pictures right there that you're seeing uh, where uh, the general in the there right there, that's the general. He's with the recruiting battalion here in Los Angeles. And I, I met him yesterday, uh, and I uh, presented myself as a blind veteran and just to show him what I'm, what I'm doing uh, in regards to helping other soldiers, including people who have lost their vision. Mm -hmm. That's so great. And that's yeah. the command sergeant major to the party command sergeant major. I didn't get a chance to take a picture with the present command sergeant major, but he's a command sergeant major who's just now uh, moving on to a different area uh, based on his area to deploy. Mm-hmm. That's great. Uh, you don't have any of the pictures when you uh, participated. Oh, that's some of your artwork. Yeah, the, my artwork right there. I did those actually at the VA uh, Blind Rehabilitation there in Long Beach. I did that, those pictures right there because it was on my walk, so I took pictures of them. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. And there's the gold medal right there, which I won for the VA throwdown. Mm -hmm. That looks like it would make a nice hubcap. I, I know. <laughs> on a car, you know, on a car, yeah. you know. It gets, yeah. you know. <laughs> and that's the uh, throwdown. Yeah, the, the other one was the, the other side. This one is the front side of the metal. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So what I was just trying to teach people who are veterans or maybe not even veterans, but whatever is causing your disablement, dis dis I can't get the word, but that's part of the, uh, the aphasia, uh, your disability, the thing is there's ways to overcome the disability, and that's what I've been do trying to do and show everybody what can be done. Now, my disability, as many of you know, was because I had three strokes in 2016. Three, a major stroke, then the massive stroke, which most people die from massive strokes. And so I was able to show them, uh, uh, which also the third stroke was uh, affecting my, my eyes. So that's why I'm visually impaired. But the thing is, I'm still doing things at any point with still being able to achieve things to do things to achieve. Mm -hmm. And so this is That's work that uh, you were participating in the uh, um, the drive. Well, this one right here, I was participating in soaring. And that's uh, like, like flying, but it's a glider. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, I was soaring uh, in a glider. There was a uh, pilot behind me in the in the in the in the back seat now of course he is an air force colonel so he took me up because he knows me he took me up uh and the thing is he let me uh fly the plane as well too wow you don't have a picture of the glider uh the glider is in there possibly uh because i had those but uh the glider is you know a, a glider and uh that's what that's kind of what we did this one right here this photo is what I was doing with what's known as horse therapy. So the thing is, it's not only calming to myself, but it's calming to the horse as well too, based on what we're doing together uh, in aspects to calm the horse down as well as myself. Mm -hmm. All right. That's great. So thank you so much. We want you to come back and show some of those other, other photos when you were okay. actually out there. Hang not when you did hang. Did he do any hang gliding? No, but he did mountain climbing. He did deep sea fishing, <laughs> and I mean just some of, especially some of those ten uh, k was it ten k walks? So much more. more I've been doing. It. I've been doing uh, 
13 mile, uh, 13.5 mile uh, walking. Yeah, see? And that's, that's my strategy to get for the future. In July, I'll be participating with the Golden Age Games. And that oh. Golden Age Games will be in about the middle of July. And then you have to show some of your workout section stuff sessions as well. Okay. Something like, you know, it's amazing how you do your, your uh, push-ups, even on that on that weak side, you know. Yes, so exactly. you need to uh, see that, you know. Um, yeah, I'm doing the push-ups on the weak side. And I'll be able to demonstrate that in the future with what I have done in, in, in aspects. That's amazing. That's so important to show, show our other veterans and and people also people who people who've had strokes, they come down with exactly. aphasia. Now, oh. yeah, as you know, Bruce Willis has aphasia now, so he's not going to be participating in movies anymore because mm -hmm. I guess the aphasia is affecting me, affecting him pretty bad. But how how's my aphasia doing right now? How's how how am I speaking? I'm speaking well. Okay, yeah, so it's it taking me yeah. taking me five years to get this far. So the thing is, people sometimes quit. I didn't quit. Right. I think it's amazing. God bless you. And then real quick before we sign off, tell us about your, your book that's out. Uh, the, the new book that's coming out should be coming out in possibly early this month. I have to find out still, but it's either this month or in June. But you have one it, already on Amazon, yeah, right? I, I've, got, I've got my book, I Once Was Whole. Uh, and that's running, already been going uh, through circulation uh, and such. So my next book's going to be coming out. Uh, it's not a race. It's a journey. Great to name. To succeed and achieve. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Well, we really thank you and congratulations on what you're thank doing you. and the role model that you are with so many other victims, stroke thank victims, you. that have given up. Keep up the good work. And we love having you on. Yeah, thank you very much. Segment every every other week we really like that thank you so much richard thank you very much appreciate it okay so we're almost there uh woo -hoo, charles woo -hoo. all righty <laughs> so the next thing is uh you know i said you know what i see a lot of this stuff so i'm gonna start adding to the show called animal humor you know, and just to put a little funny to it as we start winding down and saying yeah. goodbye, right? Absolutely, you know. So I'm going to show you like three quick clips here, you know, just little animal stuff. The first one is kind of, you know, and it's blurry, a little blurry, but, you know, you get the point. It, it's just it's absolutely, this is good stuff, you know. You know, we got to lighten up the, the, the tone here, so. snacks you provide nah come on nah bruh nah bruh get that out of here man i ain't with the beneficial nutrients out here you got tricks up your sleeve mm. see now we cooking with grease man you try to pull up with the nah bruh nah bruh get that health out of here mm. okay <laughs> all right hold on hold on oh yeah hey, y'all good yeah man oh okay that's the first one and then uh the next Luke bumps one. it, Luke. Huh? Oh, where's Luke? There's Luke. Okay, Luke. Luke, yeah, we got to get you on here, you know? So, Come on, say hi, Luke. Luke, say hi. Here, Come on, Look at him. There he is. He's like, I don't, I don't do TV. Sorry. He wants to go play in the park. Like, I know, yeah, huh? I see hell. him at the beach a few times, though. You oh, know? Yeah. He loves the beach. Okay, so I got one more I'm gonna show you, and then uh, we're gonna one move. more, and then we're gonna wind it down. 
This is the uh, raccoon steals cat food. This is good. Oh, oh man. Mm. Mm. This is really good. Mm. Hey, hey guys. How come y'all didn't tell me? Mm. Mm. How come y'all didn't tell me y'all having the cookout? Mm. I was in the neighborhood. Mm. How's everybody doing, man? Y'all good? Y'all good? Hey, how's uh, Sally doing? She was, oh, okay, okay, all right. Let me let me just dip my paw in here. You know what I'm saying? Okay. See what y'all got going. Mm. Oh, man. See, now now you didn't hit the food pay dirt, as they say. When you dip your hand in the water, get that moisture on it. Mm. Oh, this is so good, man. Y'all gonna be doing this? Oh, come on. Oh, you get you just grab some. You grab grab a handful. You dip it in the water. You see, mm, mm, get in on this, man. Mm, mm. Come on, man. Mm. Try a little bit. You taste it. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Y'all a little uptight, you know. <laughs> but that's what these cookouts are for. You feel me? Mm. But listen, mm. I gotta get on out of here, guys. Mm. Oh, thank you. I gotta get on out of here, man. But um, but you know what, man? Uh, you know. I'm being this traffic on the way back home, man. Let me just—I don't want to get hungry on the freeway. Let me let me just grab something to go and then tip on out. Y'all be good, praise God, man. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy. It's awesome. Only you would come up with something crazy like that. Hey, you know, that's why. All said. right, we're gonna bypass our our uh, Amazon part of the show because we got to go now. Everybody's kind of got things to do, but uh, we're gonna turn it over to Taylor to close out. And then from there, Martha, and then I'm going to say bye. I would like to remind our listeners and viewers about our um, amazing advertisement rates. We have 20 and 30 second advertisement slots available. Please email info at operationconfidence.org for more information and visit Operation Confidence website at www.operationconfidence.org and visit the resource page for some amazing resources. I would also like to inform our viewers and listeners about Amazon Smell. When making your next purchase on Amazon, please go to Amazon Smell and type in Operation Confidence in the Choose Your Organization donation box. Amazon will make a small donation to Operation Confidence. And to get involved in Operation Confidence Tiny Houses Project, visit our website and send us a message on how you would like to be involved. To our viewers, we would also like to inform you about Operation Confidence's Positive Redirection Team, a group of male and female veterans who are mentors, having overcome similar challenges and situations transitioning back into mainstream society. To become, or to be connected or become a team member, please email us at info at operationconfidence.org. Again, that email address, info at operationconfidence.org. Org. We are also excited to inform our listeners about Operation Confidence's Combat Boots and Lace Women Veterans Mentoring and Creative Arts Group. Zoom meetings will take place the first Saturday of the month. We're hoping to target uh, th this summer as a, a kickoff, kickoff date. So to get more information about this program or to be involved, please email me directly at Martha, M-A-R-T-H-A, at operationconfidence.org. Okay, and thank you. And as always, we want to remind our listeners that our goal for the show is to raise awareness about Operation Confidence's mission, which is to provide stable housing with a wide range of supportive services. So to get involved with our grassroots efforts, please send us an email at info at operationconfidence.org or visit our website at operationconfidence.org. And we want to please remind our, our viewers and our listeners to check out our American Invisible Heroes on YouTube. And we need you to subscribe. And oh, by the way, there won't be a show next Sunday because of Mother's Day. We want to wish all our mothers, mothers out there merry and I mean, a happy, 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 happy Mother's Day, including me. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, we want to bring you up to date that our YouTube channel has over 13,000 results. So we're moving right along. Thank you so much for coming on the show today to all our wonderful guests and always our co-hosts. And we'll see you again, especially our co-hosts next Sunday. Nope, Sunday after next. <laughs> somehow. 
You know, Mother's Day is, is I mean, mothers get everything. Father's Day, crickets. Mothers, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we shutting everything down, you know. Yeah, we crack. <laughs> hey, Charles, stop. We could be on next week. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Well, anyways, you know, that's that's great, you know, so. To all the mothers, we thank yeah. you. Mothers are, are something else, you know. That's right. Can't live without them. Couldn't without be. those you mamas. Live without them, you got that. That's so. right. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Right. Signing off. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And then we're going to close out. Close it up. I am Buddy Knute, a former Rosie the Riveter. I riveted P-40 pursuit planes during World War II. We did our part back then. Now, can you step up and help the Rosies pull America together again? Please call 304-776-4743. That is 304-776-4743. The city by the waterfront, where the victims work and play. Long Beach, PBA, California, Chapter USA. The city by the waterfront, where the victims work and play. For more information, or be a guest on our show, email info at operationconfidence.org Bye-bye! Bye now!